Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today's Sunday session is going to be a little bit different. Um, I wanted to share a story with you all that happened this past week to a really good friend of mine. And um, she is one of my sisters in Christ from... Uh, church where I used to live um <clears throat> so I didn't seen her in a while but we do like keep in touch on Facebook and stuff like that and but this past week first let me tell you a little bit of background about her she is a older lady you know um <clears throat> or more mature lady I should say and she um, lives by herself, and her family lives in another state. So she's basically alone, and she's not married. And um, like I said, she was part of my church family when I lived in a different town. And um, I just was so... Um, happy for her when she was, um, actually she was dog sitting for, um, somebody and then it turned out that they let her keep the little dog and it was a small dog, very small, much like my little coffee. And, um, so I would say kind of like Chihuahua, no, maybe a little bit bigger than a Chihuahua size. <clears throat> but, um, she got killed this past week, and it took her a while to unravel the story, but, um, throughout the week, she has expressed, of course, heartache and heartbreak over what happened to her little dog but she has exemplified like the biggest faith I have ever seen and um I wanted to read some of the things that she has said because they're so inspirational and you know it reminds me of Job and how he went through so much and you know, I just feel like she's um, experiencing a little bit of that. Um, <clears throat> so let me read some of the things that she wrote. Um, She said, Maggie was killed this morning by a bigger dog. I loved her dearly. I still love her. Prayers, ap prayers appreciate it, but no comments at this time. I'll talk about it when I'm ready. And this was Wednesday. And um, it happened that morning, Wednesday morning. And she had a lot of people advocating for her, you know, saying how, you know, this person has had so many things happen to her. She got hit by a car two years ago, I think, when she was walking to work. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, she spent some time in the hospital and then... She uh, was in another car accident short the following year. Um, but she always, you know, her faith was always so strong. And people, you know, reflect that about her. Uh, she's a warrior. No matter what hits her, she gets back up. I'm so proud of the person she is. And I know God is too. Um, 
But when she finally did open up, this is what she wrote. Maggie is dead. My mind can't grasp it. Here it is, 145, and over and over, I, rel I relive the events that took place just prior to Maggie's cruel and tragic death. How, at this very moment, I wish it was me instead of her. I don't know how to feel sad, angry, shocked, etc. Maggie was a sweet dog. She only had <laughs> two bathroom accidents the whole time I had her. She was patient most of the time and demanding when she really wanted or needed something. I'm going to miss her snuggling by my side. But let me show you all a little picture of her little, her little Maggie. And she's so sweet. So that's a picture of her little dog. And like I said, she's, she's a, she's a little, she's a little bitty dog. But, um, <clears throat> I want to read, you know, she's obviously going through pain. Um, the following morning, she said, this morning, Maggie would have either been sitting or laying on these clothes on the floor as I'm getting ready for work. Prayers my work, prayers my work day goes well. I'm starting to feel sick both emotionally and physically. However, I must make it through the day. And then, um, there's another picture of her little doggy. <laughs> this is so adorable. Just breaks my heart for her. Um, I don't know how to. But that's the little dog. And she said, um, maybe it doesn't mean anything, but I have noticed the most tragic, saddest, and heart wrenching events in my life over the past 10 years at least have taken primarily on Sunday or Wednesday. I ask myself why today, and the only logical conclusion I can come up with is because. On these two days is when the largest group of one's Christian families gather together in one place. Therefore, one like myself is on those days having the possibility the possibility the most those days having the possibility most people at one time pray, encourage, and comfort. God knew what he was doing when he gave us Christian families. Uh but <clears throat> she, um, when it happened, the dog owner came out and, uh, the bigger dog had crushed her little dog's ribs and it died either in the car on the trip to the vet or at the vet. So she had, you know, <clears throat> but you know, God is so faithful throughout this time. As soon as she called one of our sisters in Christ, she was there. The vet didn't charge her anything. She had this over abundance of people praying for her and, um, you know, just, just being there. And, and, you know, she forgave that person. She didn't even want to call animal control on them. Somebody else happened to, and then that's why... Um, <clears throat> I believe the other dog was put to sleep, but I'm not sure what type of dog it was or anything like that. I just, she just mentioned it was a bigger dog. But anyway, I just, I felt so heartbroken for her. Because she's alone and this little dog was like, her livelihood she was like she loved her so much and I just I just didn't understand it and so of course I go to the word to try to understand and like I said it's a lot like uh, Job you know that endured so much but you know kept his faith but <clears throat> Psalms 119 verse 67 says 
before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have kept, but now have I kept thy word. And, um, we have a different perspective of values and goals. When we find ourselves under pressure, God is a jealous God and he has a right to expect the constant attention and love of his people. Exodus 20, verse 5, Isaiah 42, verse 8. Um, <clears throat> James, the Lord's, the Lord's brother, said, Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. James 1, verse 2. Um, the testing of your faith develops perseverance so that you will be mature and complete, not lacking anything. James 1, verse 3 through 4. Suffering is part of the process. Um, <clears throat> so I think a lot of what we need to understand, and, and it's, you know, I was trying to come to grips with it myself, and I told my husband, you know, maybe that happened to her little dog, because maybe the, the dog, apparently, this was like the second time it had hurt or attacked so I wondered if maybe this finally resulted in what should have resulted before, and that's maybe them um, putting the dog down. And uh, I know that's harsh to say, and I have dogs too. I love my dogs, so I mean, I'm not against dogs i just think that sometimes you know just like with people there's just evil you know but um i want to read one more scripture romans chapter 8 verse 18 our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be that will be revealed in us and I think what we have to remember is that, you know, we're going to suffer trials and tribulations. God already told us that that would happen. Things are going to happen that are going to break us, break our hearts, break us down, take us to our knees. But what a perfect place to be to worship him. And she doesn't understand why this pain is there. But she's seeking those answers. And I think that she's just so amazing. She's an amazing woman. And I admire her. And, um, you know, like I said, my heart breaks for her. But I want to pray for her today. So let's go ahead and end in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this day. And we thank you for this life. And we know that you understand when we are hurt and we feel confused and we feel angry, Lord. And we wonder why bad things happen to good people. But we know that you have a plan and purpose for everything, Lord. Who's to say that that dog wasn't going to attack a baby? Or even worse, Lord, just... That is worse. And so we thank you, Lord, for your plan and your purpose. Even though sometimes it breaks us, we will have trust and faith in you. We're thankful that iron sharpens iron and that we are there for Lisa Marie. And we just pray for her heart. We pray that you give her comfort and instill the joy that she has. We know that she's hurting right now, Lord. She's hurting, but we know that you're a good father. You're a good, good God. And you're going to heal her heart, and you're going to restore her, and you're going to bring her double the joy. Beauty for ashes, my father. And we just thank you again for the trials and tribulations that turn us to you, Lord, because we know that you desire our 100% attention. <clears throat> So we thank you in this moment, and we lift her up to you, Lord. 
in Jesus' mighty name, amen. So, um, like I said, I know this was a little bit different, but I felt like I needed to pray for Lisa Marie and pray that, um, you know, her heart heals. And I know it will, because I know God is good. So, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.